the Dubai Open Blitz for Enoch Cup was played on the rest day of the 13th Dubai International Open Chess Tournament. There is one rest day designated. This is the first round of the Blitz event. Many of the top grandmasters decided to take part in this event primarily because of a very decent prize fund. The organizers offered $4,000 as a total prize fund of this one day event. So many of the stronger grandmasters turned into play. Total of 81 participants. Raji Volkov here. Blitz is a very very fast game. Quick play. Players are given much, much less time than normal game. In here it was 5 minutes for the each game. For both the players. With a 3 second increment after every move is made. Shivan Khosla. Lakshman, one of the stronger blitz players around. Lakshman is chief arbiter of the event, Kasto Abundo. Fast games, very very fast pace. Here we know now how speed chess is played. This is Murtaz Kajkalev in action. With black pieces and his opponent resigns. This is the ninth and final round of the Blitz event in progress. Evchini Mirashnichenko is playing with white pieces. This is the fifth round of the championship in progress for the Inok Cup. Grandmaster from Iran, Ghaim Maghami Ahsan, who is in fact not taking part in the Dubai International Open this year, has come to play. This event now, RR Lakshman playing white. This is Mikhail Magdalishvili on table 4. Kuryev Sarhan from Azerbaijan. A game could approximately last up to 12 to 13 minutes depending upon the number of moves that are made <laughs> quickly there's a capture recapture this one is exciting stuff takes his king to safety upon falls actually surely the black piece is here Problems with the White King. He captures a check to the King. All the pawns are lost for White. Ah, exciting fail. the top board the two leaders drew amongst themselves so there would be a playoff and here Rara Lakshman is facing Murtas Kachkalev
Lakshman forcing resignation, tying for the second spot. Lakshman, seven out of nine points. How would you describe your blitz, sir, Kunal? I had a fantastic tournament so far in this blitz. I never, I, I thought I would play very well, but I never expected that uh, I would score uh, so fantastic against uh, 2600 grandmasters who are trained to play blitz very well. Uh, I, I nearly had victories over uh, five 2600 grandmasters in a row, and uh, I also beat uh, FM and IM. And uh, I had just had two losses with uh, 20, uh, 2600 with 2600 grandmasters, but they are the, they are also seasoned grandmasters in the fray. We are well trained to play blitz, so I have no regrets regarding this blitz tournament. Tiebreaker playoff for the championship between Zawain Andriasian and Khaim Makhami Hassan. This one is for the Inok Cup. Intently being watched. Some of the top players around. Maghami showing extremely calm face there. Is it rattled by attacking white forces? Time, might has got some weaknesses trying to put some pressure there. Absolute control of the open C file for black. He first decides to consolidate his position on the king side before making a decisive forays on the other flank. There he goes, the rook to the seventh rank. Obvious exchange taken by Andreas Yan there. Position is quite tricky, of course. Makami now drives the queen away. As your the clock is ticking away for this young Armenian. Trying to find a way to continue the battle. Black is just keen on exchanging a few pieces. A draw would mean that the title will be won by Maghami. As he's playing with black pieces, Andreas are now really running short of time. There is a quick glance at his clock because the pawn on e5 is lost. And with that, White's chances of winning this game. Doesn't get easier than this. An extra pawn. for Maghami as he now pushes in for the final nail in the coffin. This is a typical Maghami grind, clearly on top here. Picks out a pawn, the draw would be enough and in fact black is cruising home.
unless it's a grievous mistake. No stopping. Look is off the board. Now this is gonna be smooth sailing. Showing extremely good composure there. Magami in total control. Extremely well fought game and Andreasian calls it a day, giving the title to Kaya Maghami Hassan of Iran. So it was a tough match and it was a tough tournament. Actually I didn't I'm supposed to get bad lose on round five, but I tried to control my psychology after that unexpected loss. Then I continued very well and I'm satisfied from the other games. The beginning of the sixth round of Dubai International Open Chess Tournament into his 13th edition. Grandmaster Parimajan Negi in action against compatriot and top seeded Krishnan Shashikiran. Shashikiran drew the second round game but since then he has been on a comeback trail on four and a half points now Shashikiran, Parimarjan and Magdalishvili Mikhail from Georgia share the lead on four and a half points each out of a possible five sharing the fourth place there are as many as um, in fact more than 15 contenders including former world junior champion Abhijit Gupta of India Margin against the Sicilian defense of Shashi Kiran. Let's have a look at this extremely important game of the tournament. Imagine Nikki playing with white pieces in the sixth round encounter against compatriot and top seeded Krishnan Shashi Kiran. Opens with the king pawn and Shashi Kiran, ever ready for a full blooded battle, goes for the Sicilian defense. True to its name, the Sicilian defense carries a reputation of being one of the bloodiest chess openings with clear intentions that black would go for the king side, queen side kill and white will be allowed a free hand on the other flank. So it's more or less a race most of the times. D4, as the computer suggests, is uh, one of the moves possible here. It's called the Mora Gambit. But in here, for imagine, goes to knight f3. The most topical, the move that is favored by perhaps anybody who has ever played E4. Kiran goes for the Knight of Variation. These are the first initial moves of the Knight of Variation, which are named after, which is named after uh, the great uh, Argentinian Grandmaster Miguel Knight of, who helped popularize this opening. And Knight of Sicilian has been uh, played by some of the finest and the greatest players ever. So, be it in the past, uh, Bobby Fisher, who took upon it as uh, one of his favorite openings and then uh, Gary Kasparov proved to the world that this was indeed one of the sharpest and something that gives black real chances. More recently players like Magnus Carlsen, Vishnathan Anand, of course all the world champions like Topolov, Anand and uh, well uh, even some other youngsters, Kara King, everybody has been playing this. This is like one of the most sought after openings. Hordes of analysis already in place in the computers of all the Star Wars. This is one of the base positions. This is called the Kelfin variation. The Kelfin variation black uh, deviates from developing the bishop on f8. So this bishop still in uh, there and decides to consolidate the queen side first and then goes for perhaps at times short castle this is the, indeed the most topical position in the girlfriend variation here 
the most uh, popular move advocated by girlfriend is queen b6 and further analysis has proved that it's perfectly playable for black however on this stage she chooses the more vibrant and uh, of course very very dangerous bishop e7 quite clear that both the players going for blood in the sixth round encounter four and a half or five both of them and for imagine on the last move sacrifice a piece for two pawns to open up the position completely and here in here shashi already senses that uh, he probably is not so much better keeping the piece with him decides immediately to give it back knight c5 this was in fact a new idea as we checked it this was a new idea probably home cooked by shashi kira and now he retrieves the bishop back Rook g8 attacking the queen again. The idea is that if black moves the queen, the pawn on g2, all the way at g2, this pawn comes under the scanner. I imagine undaunted. Brings the bishop to g2. The major worry for the black, the player who is playing black is Shashi Kiran, of course. So the major worry for Shashi would be in this position to look after his king well. It's absolutely without any cover, especially no pawn cover at all. If you look at the white king and the black king, there's like massive difference here. This king is oh, heavily supported. With the pawn on b2, with the pawn on c2, and this king oh, it looks almost in shambles. And this was probably what uh, prompted for Imagine to go for this variation. As he now makes some routine maneuvers and uh, tries to improve the position, nevertheless, and wins uh, an exchange sacrificed by Sashi Kiran. In fact, it's two pieces for Rook. And in here, definitely, uh, Black seems to be holding on. I mean, it looks for sure that Black is very much in the game because it's two pieces and rather two bishops for the Rook. And of course, these uh, two very dominating pass pawns in the center. Should the queens get exchanged, Black will do. A lot of, lot of uh, that will obviously be able to pose a lot of problems for white. But uh, with the queen on and the king still under the hammer, the black king that is not so easy to say. Possibly unclear is a wise judgment. As for imagine now pins a knight, especially wins back the other knight which he trapped a few moves back. H4, just a nice distraction. I can imagine the clocks were ticking away at this point of time for the players. So she thought it wise not to go for the exchange. Now just keen to centralize his forces. I imagine here in this position had a certain draw, but this is where it matters. He goes for the kill, plays at six, taking his chances. He knows that he can possibly draw at any point of time, but here Shashi Kiran plunders. Allowing the rook to come to f1 and give a check on f7, and in here came the queen b8 check, and it's all over because it's going to be checkmate very soon. Shashi Kiran is out. For Imagine, a convincing victory against Shashi Kiran. How was the game? Uh, it was a very tense game. Uh, after the Nizov opening, I think he gained the upper hand somewhere in the middle game. I made a mistake with knight g3, knight g4. And then I was under pressure throughout, but in the time pressure, he could not find any exact way to win, and uh, instead he uh, made some mistakes, and I got back into the game. You are now the uh, leader of the championship, and three more rounds to go. What will be your expectations? On the last three rounds, they're always the most critical rounds in any open tournament. So, uh, being a leader right now, it doesn't matter so much. I think there are a lot of people with chances to win. While here on the second board, Mikhail Magdalishvili, one of the co-leaders, is facing Alexis Alexandrov of Belarus. This one is a Queen's Gambit decline game. Avicii Gupta is white against the Ragos in defense of Evgeny Miroshnichenko.
former national champion Pia Diban in action against Sergei Volkov there and this is Murtaz Kajkalev of Kazakhstan who is facing Sarhan Guliev of Azerbaijan early days yet Kajkalev with white pieces has an ELO rating of 2618 exactly as per Imajan Negi. Kuliyev Sarhan is 2497 and this is John Ludwig Hammer. Hammer is on a comeback trail big time facing Tigran Kotani on here. M. Sham Sundar has done quite well. Sham Sundar in line for a Grandmaster Norm. Playing with black here. Amin um, Basim is his opponent from Egypt. Alexei Fedorov is playing with black hair. He is playing Dimitri Kayumov. Kadir Gusinov. Fight against Veronika Schneider of Hungary. Sicilian defense game this is. Second seed and highly regarded. Fadi Mira Kopian. In action here with White. Former World Junior Champion Zavin Andreasian came close to winning the Enoch Blitz Cup. It went down in the tiebreaker to Gahan Magami Hassan. This is Yuri Kuzubo with white pieces against Pontus Carlson. Kuzubo from Ukraine, Carlson from Sweden. Both Grandmasters. Kuzubo a regular visitor to India for many open tournaments. Just playing regularly. So, Tarshi Roy Chaudhary with black pieces against Mirab Gagunashwari of Georgia. So, Tarshi is awaiting the confirmation of his Grandmaster title pending the 2500 rating requirement. Already got three Grandmasters norm to his credit. Shekhar Ganguly is playing with black pieces. Playing with AR Saleh Salim from UAE. And three and a half points. A full point behind the leaders. Ganguly goes for the Queen's Gambit accepted. One of his pet variations. Saleh Salim arrived a little late for his game. By the different clocks, it's evident. Ten minutes ahead on time, Ganguly. It's only the second move. Sergei Kusne of Russia is playing Dimante Dolati from Lithuania. Playing with black has gone for the grand field defense. So some base you put here. Playing with white pieces here. Defeated Surya Shekhar Ganguly in the second round. Done okay since then. Prathmesh Mokar with white pieces. He's facing Ambro El Javich of Libya. By the way, just on three points since then. This is the sixth round in progress. Iranian talent, the Asian women's champion. She is. Lakshman, the Commonwealth champion. 
five pieces here. This is ragusin, which has been becoming a flavor. His opponent is Chaba Balog of Hungary. This is Tanya Sachdev up against young talent Sayantan Das. Excellent playing conditions and in the seventh round. But imagine Negi now emerges as a sole leader on five and a half points. Nice victory in the sixth round. Can you tell us about the game? Okay, I played against uh, Grandmaster from Azerbaijan, Sarhan Guliyev, and it was uh, Roy Lopez. And uh, very strange position after the opening because he started to play very active on king side. And okay, it was I blundered somehow, and uh, then it was. Uh, tactical struggle with a lot of complications and then it was finished by just ending uh, rook and bishop against rook and knight and four pawn for each side and I think it was more or less equal but then my opponent played quite badly and I won quite easy game yeah finally in the ending yeah I think that just I was lucky yeah in the end a six-round victory. Can you tell us about the game? Well, I, I got my uh, preparation, but then he find a very good uh, reply, and I got a slightly worse position. So I was basically fighting for a draw most of the game, but later on in the time trouble, I managed to change the table and.